What is a genetic stripe? What's up, YouTube? Today's video is about the genetic stripe morph in bearded dragons. There's a lot of controversy around genetic stripe. Is it an incomplete dominant or is it uh, something that's line bred? Whatever it is, there's a, an answer to it. And uh, I kind of want to get to the bottom of it because I've actually had people ask me in the past, what do you think about genetic stripe? How do you think Thunderbolts came about? Blah, blah, blah. And there's gnats flying around in here, which means I got to put some gnat traps around. Okay, so that's going to bug me today. Um, so genetic stripe. I want to show you a few genetic stripes before I get into what a genetic stripe actually is and how it came about. But I want to give you, obviously, an idea of what a genetic stripe looks compared to a regular bearded dragon. So let's go ahead and do that first, and then we'll come back up here and we'll do the history of the genetic stripe. So let's start off with this girl. This is Hamira. Hamira is a normal scale, a hypo yellow normal scale. Super, super nice color. I freaking love her colors. You can tell she is not a genetic stripe. However, she has some nice little striping going down the bottom there. This is not a genetic stripe. This is honestly the beginning of a color stripe. If I were to breed this girl to a genetic stripe, I would get babies that are normal scale all the way to genetic stripe, with some of them having super nice stripes because she actually has some striping herself. And that is just how it works with genetic stripe. Now I wanna show you the male that I paired her to. The male that I paired her to was a genetic stripe. And out of the pairing, even though this girl doesn't have perfect stripes and the male I'm gonna show you doesn't have perfect stripes, out of the pairing, I got a couple dragons that were super straight stripe, if you wanna call it that. Um, I'll explain what super straight stripe is later in the video. Um, but super straight stripe is what I got out of her and the male that I'm gonna show you right now. So this guy here, he glows in the dark, if you can't tell. This is my hypo trans leatherback dunner genetic stripe male. This is Helios. You can see his stripe is, why are you puffed out so bad that your freaking ribs are showing, bro? It's not that serious. Chill out. He was asleep. I woke him up. He's not happy about it. But you can see his stripe. It's not very, very straight. It's very jagged. It's very ununiform. But he and Hamira both produced a couple. I say a couple. I don't remember exactly how many it was. I'll show you the pictures as I'm talking. Produce a couple of nice, super straight stripes. And surprising, because I think if she would have had more eggs from him, I think there would have been some thunderbolts in there. And I say this because if I'm going to explain it later in the video. Thunderbolt comes from genetic stripe to genetic stripe. Genetic stripe came from color stripe. So therefore, if Hamira is what I think it is, a color stripe with not a good color stripe, just co color stripe, and this guy's a genetic stripe, technically, being almost that they're the same thing, I would have got a Thunderbolt if they came out translucent. But that's not how lucky I got. I got only one clutch, and all of the super straight stripe babies that I got were not translucent. But that's just how it went for me. This guy is super nice, super colorful. Glows in the dark. Can't wait to get more babies out of them. This next year or this next coming season, he'll actually be paired to a super high blue bar female. So I can add more blue barring to this particular look, to this particular combo here. This guy is also a sibling to a paradox. Like his clutch mate was a paradox. There he goes. He's not happy about whatever I'm doing. Come on, bro. Chill out. He's legit puffed out so bad that his rib cage is showing. Look at that. Not happy. Not happy. Look at him. Not happy. Come on, bro. Chill out. He's funny. He's a character. All right. I'm going to show you one of the females that I did help hold back from this clutch. Um, I was I should have held back a lot more, but I don't know. I just wasn't thinking at the time. And people beat me to the punch on buying the dragons while I was still considering it. But, yep, let me show you the female that I held back from the pairing. So this girl, even though she is going into shed and also looks orange, she did come from two very high yellow parents. But that's just the way color works. Color works in a way that whatever the parents came from, the babies can also look like. And I know the dad came from a orangish yellow male and orange is yellow female. He just came out yellow himself, but obviously he put out orange to his babies. 
And there you go. I got an orange hypotrans leather back genetic stripe. So this is one of the babies that I kept from that or the only baby that I kept from that pairing. You can see that the genetic stripe on this baby is not super straight. It actually is. Some people would actually consider this a color stripe because it's not, it has its indents. It's not connecting. It's jagged. So therefore it's not technically a genetic stripe, but how did I get a genetic stripe that wasn't technically a genetic stripe from a genetic stripe bearing baby? I'll explain that later in the video. Uh, kind of already talked about it, but I'll explain it in more in depth later in the video, but super nice baby. Should have kept the uh, super straight stripe babies. I just wasn't thinking. I, I thought I was going to get more babies out of her, out of the mom. And uh, she only gave me one clutch. So I was kind of disappointed. But that is my fault. I should have just kept them when I had the chance. And uh, that's just how it went for me. So now let's go into talking about some other genetic stripes. So these next two girls. This is a hypo leather genetic stripe. This, this is a hypo genetic stripe. Now, obviously, you can see that they're pretty straight. Like, this is a straight stripe going down. This is a straight stripe. You can kind of see it. I, she's blending in real well. But that's just to show you that the last baby wasn't technically a genetic stripe because she had jagged edges. She had parts where it didn't connect. So that's just, I'm just adding to the fact, how did I get a color stripe from a genetic stripe parent? If it was an actual genetic, if it was something that was passable to the offspring, and reproducible, I wouldn't have got a color stripe. I would have only got normal scales and genetic stripes, but that's just, obviously, that's just how it went for me. Super nice babies, super nice. They're not even babies anymore. I wish they were still babies. They're almost breeding size at this point. This is the girl that was sick not that long ago. I had, she's, she's getting her weight back up, but I, I was struggling for a while to get her to eat constantly and consistently. Um, she would eat here and there, but now she's eating pretty good. So that's, that's good. All right. Let me show you one more genetic stripe and then I'll end this video off with talking about Zeus. You already know who Zeus is. That's my main man. So this girl here, she is another hypo genetic stripe. However, this is the one that I will be pairing to Zeus. She has a nice blue going on the side of the genetic stripe. So that's something that I want to make sure it passes on to the babies. And uh, she has some nice coloration. Honestly, it's been kind of hard for me to find some nice genetic stripes that are red. So I've been what I've been finding is red, orange, orange, yellow. So hopefully this next season, I'll be able to find some really nice high end red genetic stripes. I don't want to pay for a red monsters. I'll get into a red monster video some other time. Uh, if you've ever talked to me and asked me about red monsters or what I thought. You already know how I think about red monsters. It's not even worth me mentioning right now, but this is going to be the girl that I pair to Zeus. She is actually a hypo GS het trans possible het zero. So first I want to get some thunderbolts and then we'll figure out if she's het zero or not, but there you go. So Daphne and Apollo that I, sh I showed Daphne earlier. She was the hypo leatherback genetic strike. Um, hopefully I get some head, uh, some visual zeros out of that pairing. Um, but also I want to get some males that are hypo trans leather back done or genetic strike possible head zeros. And maybe I can get some thunderbolt zeros in the future. We'll see what happens if she proves out. Obviously that's only if she proves out, but there you go. Let's go talk about Zeus. So let's see how long this lasts, but I just want to show you them next to each other so you can see what the pairing is. Um, probably going to take a picture of it use it as a thumbnail, but let's see how long it lasts. He's usually pretty adamant about the females, but there you go. That's the pairing. Oh, he's noticed. Who is this next to me? Who's that? But there it goes. All right, back in you go. So Zeus, you can see he is a Thunderbolt, a Hypotrans Leatherback Thunderbolt. He doesn't have as much blue as he used to have as a baby, but the blue is still there. So my hope in pairing him with Minth, which is the hypo genetic stripe that I just had next to him. I hope to bring more blue to this pairing. We shall see what happens. Hopefully I can find another female for him. I hate to only have one female for him. I have some other females that are genetic stripe as well. They're just not as old. And um, 
Therefore, I can't breed them right now. I'll have to wait another season. But I only have one right now. So we shall see. Love the way this guy looks. He still has poop on his head because this video has only been filmed a couple hours away from each other from the last one where I was talking about Leatherback. Even though it's been like almost a week since the Leatherback video, probably. I don't know how I'm scheduling these. But look at that. Super nice. But that's it. Let's go talk about the history of genetic stripes and what I think about genetic stripes in general. So with genetic stripe, the problem is whenever I started doing this about 12 years ago, 13 years ago or so, there were no genetic stripes. What we had was regular bearded dragons and color stripes and phantom stripes. Phantom stripes and color stripes are different, even though they're technically the same thing. They do sh look a little bit different. Um, so I'm not going to say they're the same, but they do look similar. They're just different. The problem with that is there was no genetic stripe before. How did genetic stripes come about? I want to explain this a little bit better um, by showing you a dad that's a genetic stripe and a baby that's not a genetic stripe, but is technically a genetic stripe based off genetics, right? So what I mean by that is if you breed a genetic stripe to a normal bearded dragon, you get genetic stripes, you get color stripes, and you get normal bearded dragons. How do you get color stripes from that pairing if color stripes is also a te a technically a genetic as well, you know? So that's, re that's really the reason behind genetic stripes. Genetic stripes came from color stripe line breeding. People were breeding color stripes, the color stripes, the color stripes, and eventually the color stripes produced something that had a straight stripe, but also had color to it. And in that case, people started calling it a genetic stripe. Then you keep on going, you breed genetic stripe to color stripe, color stripe to genetic stripe, uh, genetic stripe to genetic stripe, and bam, you get what we call a super straight stripe or a, a thunderbolt, depending on if it's a translucent or not translucent. And what I mean by that is if you get a super genetic stripe or a super straight stripe, whatever you want to call it, that is not translucent, it still has the very straight stripes and it still has the blue barring around the sides there. But because it's not translucent, it's not a thunderbolt because it doesn't have that thunderbolt look. It just has a super straight stripe. And I don't have one of those, but I'll show you a picture of it and I'll give credit to the person that has it uh, because I personally like the look of the thunderbolt and i also like the look of the super straight strike and courtney at bourbon city exotics she actually has produced some super straight stripes with what with what looks like you know a little bit of marbling or translucent scaling coming out the sides where the blue barn would be and she's actually calling that the lightning bolt because it's not technically a thunderbolt uh it's not a super straight stripe or whatever you want to call it um those are the super straight stripe the reason i do that is because people just call those genetic stripes as well um, even though they look way different than a genetic stripe actually looks. A genetic stripe is straight with some jagged edges, a super straight stripe, not like that at all, but both of those are so-called genetic stripes. And then we have the thunderbolts, which is what you saw with Zeus there. Um, so what I call a thunderbolt can only be accomplished by breeding a genetic stripe to genetic stripe that also has translucent in it. So whether both parents are het for translucent or one of the parents is visual translucent and the other one's het for translucent, you will get thunderbolts out of the pairing if they are the right combination. They have to have that super straight stripe, then they also have to be translucent, and then that's how you get a thunderbolt. So the reason I say genetic stripe is not incomplete dominant, instead it's just a line bred trait is because, so incomplete morphs, whenever you have a parent with two copies of that morph, all of the babies will have at least one copy of the morph, meaning that all the babies will be visible for genetic stripe. That is incomplete dominant if you're talking about breeding thunderbolts to normal scales, which is not the case. When you breed thunderbolts to normal scales, what you get is half the babies are genetic stripes and the other half are normal to color stripe. Therefore, it's not incomplete dominant. Instead, it's just a line bred trait. So again, hopefully that explanation kind of explained it to everybody. Um, it's hard to explain it to people that un don't understand how genetic stripe came about that are just now starting out on it and they're seeing genetic stripe being labeled as a morph. It is a morph, but it's not technically a dominant or incomplete dominant or a recessive trait. It's a, just a line bred trait um, that is technically not something that can be replicated super easily with just one parent. Um, and you don't need two parents unless you want to make a thunderbolt or a super straight stripe. So therefore, if you are trying to breed for genetic stripes and you end up getting color stripes out of your pairings, do not be baffled. Do not question your breeding. It's just the way it is. It's because 
Genetic stripes and normals will produce a wide variety of different things. So therefore, that's what you should expect when you're breeding for genetic stripe. And if you're breeding genetic stripe, genetic stripe to genetic stripe, just know about 75% of the babies will come out genetic stripe, 25% will come out normal or color stripe. And then out of that 75%, a third will be thunderbolts or super straight stripe, depending on if you have translucent in those babies or not. So I was watching the genetic stripe video after I started editing it, and I realized that I left a key component out, and that was to show you some examples of some dragons that came from genetic stripe parents or dragons that came from non-genetic stripe parents, non-color stripe parents that look like they would have came from it. So I'm gonna start throwing some pictures up. The first one I wanna show off is this red leatherback female. She came from Hades, which I showed off in the leatherback video and also Persephone, which I'll throw a picture up of right here. Um, you can see that neither of these dragons actually have genetic stripe or color stripe. They're actually pretty normal looking dragons uh, as far as the stripes go. And then they had babies that had stripes. There was two babies in particular that I noticed had very good stripes for not coming from genetic stripes parents, which is why I say that this is a line bred trait. It's not something that actually is a co-dominant or incomplete dominant, however you gonna wanna say that, or actual dominant or recessive or anything like that. So it's not necessarily a genetic trait. It's just something that can be reproducible because of it being a line bred trait. So if two red bearded dragons that have no genetic stripe, no color stripe can produce two dragons that have color stripes or genetic stripes, then how come a genetic stripe bearded dragon, which I showed him also, I'll show a picture of him right now as well. He actually produced a few different looking bearded dragons, one that had very nice straight stripes and then one that had not so nice straight stripes. But both of them are technically genetic stripes because they came from a genetic stripe parent. But technically, the one that doesn't have the straightest stripes and has the broken stripes, that would be considered a color stripe because it's not perfectly straight. I would only call something a genetic stripe if the stripe, if the stripe is perfectly straight. So it can't have any breaks in it. It can't have any jagged edges unless it's a dunner. Dunners give it a jagged edge look. There's gnats in here like crazy, and it's bugging me out. I ordered some roaches not that long ago, like a couple days ago they got here, and um, these roaches are freaking gnat infested. I'm pissed off, but it is what it is. It happens sometimes, and um, I'm not gonna say who it was because I have ordered from them before and didn't have any issues. But this time, oh my God, there's so many freaking gnats in here. Um, I'm obviously irritated. Um, I don't even know where I was now. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't call anything a genetic stripe unless the stripe is actually straight and doesn't have any breaks in it. If it does have a break in it and it looks like a genetic stripe, I would call that a color stripe. If it doesn't look like a color stripe at all and just has those blobs of color on the back, that's just a regular stripe bear dragon. So for me to get super nice stripes from a genetic stripe and also not very nice stripes from the genetic stripe, just to show you that it is a line bred trait because how does one parent carrying the genetic stripe breeding to another parent that doesn't carry genetic stripe produce genetic stripes and color stripes? There's only one explanation to that and that's because genetic stripe is line bred. So from breeding genetic stripe to normal stripes, what you get is super nice stripes all the way down to color stripes. And um, that's just how it goes because that's, that's how genetic stripes came to be. They came from color stripes and that's just how you get a genetic stripe. And the way you get color stripes is from breeding color stripes or breeding genetic stripes. It's just a big ordeal turning into the karate kid over here, chopping gnats out my face. Jesus. All right. That's all I want to add to the video. Um, let's get back into it. So with that said, thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put on in the future. As always, peace.